Well, from Joe Walsh to the great Michael Stanley, just a couple of the many, many long lists of names who are immortalized by rock and roll, of course. And the man who helped make their careers here with a new book, David Spiro. Good morning. Good morning. It is good so to see you guys. Good to have you here, Thank David. You. Thank you. Your book, amazing. I mean, my goodness. And it's a long, whoops, a whoops. long time overdue. But look at this giant, yeah. thick book. A lot of incredible memories for yeah, you. What a, a lifetime of memories. a lot of pictures, too, you know, because I, I don't read very well. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the pictures can tell the story, too. Yeah. David, let's start off. Talk about your career. Incredible year. This is called A Life in the Wings, My 60-Year Love Affair with Rock and Roll. You started so young because of your dad's influence. You were 13 years old and right. already in this world that only most people could just dream of. Yeah, it was, you know, I started working on the Upbeat show yeah. when I was 13. I was holding up the cue cards for Don Webster. And uh, yeah. by the time I was 15, um, I started writing the show because I knew the music a little better than my dad. And that's how you were involved, because your dad was involved. Right, so he was the producer of the TV show. So. And that was your generation. It was, yeah. it, a lot of them were teenagers who were playing on exactly. the show. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of the people that did the show were your maybe two years older and right. that was it right. but um, wow. and just growing up in that atmosphere of music was so wonderful and it led to my uh, oh yeah there we are here. there was a young Don Webster there we There's saw a second some ago of the Eagles there with Michael, Michael Stanley, Stanley and Joe Walsh at the old stadium Wow Wow, that was a fun place. and the, you and uh, did Joe, Steve, Joe it, helped you meet Michael, is that how yeah, that worked out? Yeah, you know, I knew Joe. He was in a band called The Measles that was on uh, one of the house bands on Upbeat. Okay. Yeah. So I met him back then, and we were both big Beatle fans and, you know, wow. talked about music all the time. And when I eventually got into being a DJ on WNCR and then WMMS, Joe used to come and hang out on my radio show because... He wanted to do radio. Yeah, you know? yeah. Joe did. Crazy, Isn't that funny? Right? You, I, the, 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 all the musicians want to do radio. Exactly. The radio's want to be musicians. Yeah. It's like yeah. ball players right. and musicians. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, but he was. Uh, he said to me, "Listen, you're not going to do this when you're 20, are you?" And I'm like, "Probably not." I yeah. mean, who would be doing radio? <laughs> you're like, "Okay, you no." Know? That's great. And he says, "So I met this guy. I'm, I worked on his first album. I'm working on his second album. You're going to be his manager." I said, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. He says, well, I'll bring you out to L.A. You'll meet my manager. He'll take you around. So for about six, seven months, I, I shadowed his guy around. Wow. And then he said, uh, so you're going to manage Michael. And then once you know what you're doing, you're going to manage me. Wow. Which I never thought would happen. Right. But, of course, one day the call came. And next thing I'm, you know running Joe's career it was it was fantastic incredible I remember seeing you we go back a long long time and I remember um, I was with my mom and she used to dance for upbeat so you guys right. knew each other That's and right. way 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 back so our history is very long especially with my family's music and my brother his band and stuff I remember you telling me once in just casual very casual conversation that the Eagles were playing your birthday party or something like that, right? Oh, some of them were, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> the life wow. that you've led because these guys, not only were you managing them, working with them, but you were so close with these, the most amazing musicians well, of all time. Well, I mean, to manage, you have to be part of their entire life. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's, you, you become part of the family. There's no other way to do it because every decision is made as a yeah, group. Yeah, for sure. Know. You become, you are their best. You're Todd, as a musician, he knows this. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, listen, my wife makes all my decisions. She's, there you go. she's his manager. <laughs> she, she knows. <laughs> uh, we don't have a ton of time, but I just want to kind of get into the book and what people are going to get out of it. Obviously, this is, you know, you have such a storied career with all mm -hmm. these different musicians, but that life in the wings, being being kind of the, the, the side guy a little bit, right. it, it's just got to be fascinating. Well, the, uh, Charlie Weiner, who I think you probably know is a musician around town, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. His real name is Kim Zonneville. He's the one who wrote the book. Okay. Mm. And he, um, that was kind of the feel. He's like, I want people to understand what it means from that view from the rings. Because it, it was a situation where you, I don't watch my band. Because I trust them. I know they're going to do what they need to do. Yeah. I watch the audience. Mm. And if all of a sudden the audience starts to shift, then I have to have a talk with my band because maybe this song isn't working mm -hmm. here or that song's not working there. And 
When I first started working with Bad Company, I, mm -hmm. I took Paul Rogers aside afterwards and I said, hey, Paul, we got two songs that don't seem to be working together. And he, Really? Nobody's ever questioned my set list, but yeah. tell me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. Because they don't get this, they don't know. No. You yeah. know, they're doing what they think is right. But exactly. that, and that's your job as a wow, manager, and I can't even imagine the inside stories and scoop that you have. That's why the book is so that's thick. Right. Right. That's why the <laughs> so book. you are going to be at Music Box Supper Club on Thursday at 7 o'clock. Will you right. be signing the book? I will be signing books, and uh, Mike Miller is going to do an interview with me about it, and he's a great interviewer if you've ever yeah. been to any of his shows down there. And then on August 4th, I'm going to be at uh, um, Max Back Books on Coventry, right oh, next okay. to Tommy's. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know? yeah. Grab a milkshake. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or great the great onion soup. Yes, or a sandwich or whatever. Wow. Exactly. Right. Everything is good. So, Your book, I can't wait to read it, yeah. um, A Life in the Wings. I mean, you've certainly lived a long, long, incredible life with these I got groups. more to go. I know. Right. This is just volume one. Yeah, that's volume one. There, uh, there's, uh, there's a great story about picking up somebody from Akron and taking them to a Bruce Springsteen concert, oh. too, which is a fascinating story. We can't get into it, but make sure that's why Buy you need the book. The book. Yeah, or, or go I mean, see like David uh, Thursday at Music Box. Well, see, Club the too. key to what I do is it's not fun unless you bring somebody else in on it. Yeah. Well, thank you for allowing us and bringing us yeah. along you, with this thanks, ride. Thanks. Thank you so much. Tell your thank wife you. we said hi. I will. God thanks. bless her. Oh, so nice. All right, can't wait to dive into this book.